at the request of Jesus, uh, Martha went to call Mary and said, the teacher has come and is calling for you. Mary gets up <clears throat> immediately. Uh, she leaves her house to go see Jesus in verse 29. And we know in verse 30 that this is outside the village. John tells us that many of the Jews <clears throat> were around and, and they were uh, curious about what, what was going on. She goes out to meet Jesus. Mary suddenly leaves the house. And they reason to themselves, I guess she's going to the tomb in verse 31. She's going to do what people do for funerals. She's going to grieve the loss of Lazarus. So they do what good church people do. They comfort her. They go out to comfort her. Folks, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 7, 4, the heart of the wise is in the house of the mourning. M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. <clears throat> the heart of the wise is in the house of the mourning, house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. Please don't, don't buy into the hype, especially the social media hype, that everybody's life is better than yours. See, everybody wants to present as if their house is a house of mirth. But that's just not true. Sometimes our houses are houses of sadness and depression and loss and suffering. And sometimes we're just not honest about it. Sometimes, you know, I mean, I, I, I get to stand up here and talk and y'all can visibly see that I'm suffering. You can hear it. You can hear the last few weeks it's been that way. Most people live in silence, though. I'm kind of like a walking illustration of y'all's lives. Most people are really not where they act like they are. You know, I was a hospice chaplain for a good while. You guys know that I'm also the <clears throat> on-call weekend chaplain at the hospital. And, and I'm, hope, I'm hoping you'll understand this. I'm sure you will. I truly believe deep in my heart that there is something sacred and holy about Christians coming together to comfort others who have lost somebody. I often feel a little bit weird after all of these years, after all of the ministry, I often feel a little bit weird going into a hospital or a funeral home or a house and there is the deceased spouse. There is the deceased six-year-old lying on the gurney. There is the deceased <clears throat> six month old and the mama wants me to hold her deceased baby. Why do I say that it's weird? Because for every one of those cases, I was not there for their birth, but I was there for their death. And there is something sacred about that. But most people don't know what to say, do they? <clears throat> you know, you, you can have a really, really good friend not show up to your dad's funeral. Not because they don't like you. Not because they don't love your family or love your loved one. 
but because they just don't know what to say. They don't know what to do. And I'm telling you, y'all know this. People will say the craziest things. And they do, they do, don't they? <clears throat> when somebody dies, people don't know how to handle it. They will say the craziest things. And, and, and it's their way of coping. We just need to give more grace as Christians. Sometimes, folks, all they need is just a touch on their shoulder. Sometimes all they need is a hug. Sometimes all they need, and this is me teaching you right now, Sometimes all they need is you just to be in the room with them and just be there. They don't all necessarily need 17 meals, although that's nice. <clears throat> they don't need the card or the magic words to take away their pain because guess what? The, the, the pain's not going away. You don't get over serious loss. You don't. But you do get through it. You never get over it, but you do get through it. And you get through it with the help of other believers. I don't know how people do it without the church. I see it all the time. You would be shocked, shocked. <clears throat> like some of y'all want us to come and be with you all the time. At least you got us on speed dial. I'm, I may not visit your house, but the first time you come to our church, but at least you got me on speed dial and I will come in an emergency if I can. You would be shocked how many people don't have a pastor to turn to. Y'all have got three. You would be shocked to know how many people don't even have a church. And they're just grabbing people to try to put together a funeral. And you talk to them right there. Right there in the ER. Have you, have you have any plans? You know, which have you talked? Have you even thought about <clears throat> what what funeral home you're going to use? Or have you, you know, there are several good ones in the community. We got Kirby and Connor and others, and you know, uh, lot, lots of good ones. What which one would you like to use? They don't even have the support. But you know we try to we try to con we try our best, don't we, to encourage them, and we say, well, Aunt Flossie is up there giving Jesus fits, or so and so is up there in heaven, and now they're they're on hole number eighteen, playing golf. <clears throat> and if I had a dollar for every time somebody some angel got their wings. Yeah, they've been watching a lot of old Christmas movies. Well, Aunt Bossy is finally an angel. And sometimes I'm like, hmm. I don't, I don't. <laughs> Let, let's just hope Aunt Flossie is in, in the gates. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. But that's what we do to cope with loss. And you know, it's okay if you fumble over your words. But just, this is just a side note, just a freebie here. And this is really actually part of, of the truth in this story. You can minister to others knowing that Jesus has entered into your affliction. Jesus has entered into your adversity. Jesus has entered into your, your sorrow and your pain. And the Son of God walked out of it victoriously as if it was nothing. He literally walked into death, gave up his life, and, and said, I've got the keys to this car. I'm, I'm, I'm coming back. And that gives some wind under the sails, under the wings right there. Knowing that God does not waste, God 
does not waste your cancer. God does not waste your sorrow. God does not waste your loss. God does not waste your pain. God does not waste your sickness. God does not waste anything because he is the sovereign God of the universe. He doesn't waste any of it, but he turns it for good. I do not know how he does that. I just know that he does. <clears throat>